Welcome back to Inside the Standard Library. This time, we're looking at the flat map method of sequences. This is similar to the map method, but it concatenates the results of its transformation closure rather than adding them as individual elements. Let's go over to Xcode. I'm going to start with an array of strings containing popular sayings. Let sayings equals an array of stay hungry, stay foolish, try again, fail again, fail better, believe you can, and you're halfway there, end array. What we want to do is write some code to pull out all the words used inside those sayings. And an easy way of doing that is using the components separated by method. Let's try and write that using map. Let words equals sayings.map $0.components separated by a space. Print words. Take a look at the output. We've gone from having a simple string array to having an array of arrays, which isn't quite what we wanted. This is where flat map helps. It concatenates the results of the transformation function, which means it adds the contents of each new array to the existing array, rather than adding them as arrays inside arrays. Let's look at another example. If you have teams of people playing a sport, we might put them into an array like this. Let teams equals an array of, an array of Dan, Philippa, an array of Liz, Scott, an array of Ed, Bessie, and the teams array. We can then use flat map to get an array of all player names. Let all players equals teams.flatmap $0. Print all players. That's the same as using the joined method, then converting it to an array like this. Let all players2 equals array teams.joined. Print all players2. Because flat map is a method of sequences, we can use it across more than just arrays. Sets, ranges, and more all work. For example, here's an array of some ranges. Let numbers equals an array of 1 through 5, 20 through 30, 50 through 100, end array. We could use flat map to bring that down to a single array of numbers like this. Let all numbers equals numbers.flatmap $0, print all numbers. Now we'll get the numbers 1 through 5, 20 through 30, and 50 through 100, all in an array. We already covered the map and compact map methods of sequences, but flat map's a little bit different thanks to that flattening behavior it has. You see here, we already have a sequence, and flat map lets us avoid having to have sequences of sequences, like two-dimensional arrays. Later on in this series, we'll be looking at optionals and the result type. We will see flat map become significantly more useful. Think of this as an easy way into the method. Once again, we've got to make sure our method's able to handle a throwing transformation function. So we'll be using throws and rethrows. Let's try and write it ourselves. Having already written versions of map and compact map, this should be an easy one to solve. So let's dive right in. Extension sequence, public func flat map to generic over t, takes a transformation of an element from the sequence, throws and returns an array of t, the whole thing rethrows and returns another array of t. Inside there, I'll make a new variable called result, which is an array of t, then loop over all the items itself, and append to result the output from the transformation function, and finally return result. That wasn't so hard, was it? Let's make sure it works by adding a two to our flat map calls, here, here, and here. And it looks like we've hit a problem. The range code is failing. To see why, let's look at our flat map two method again. Right now, it says three things. It's generic over t. The transformation function will also return an array of t. And the whole thing returns an array of t. One of those three isn't true in our range example. In our other code, we had arrays of strings everywhere. But now we have a second kind of sequence in the mix, a range. So the transformation function here isn't going to return an array of t, it's going to return some other kind of sequence, a range. Let's start by fixing that. We don't care what the transformation function sends back as long as it's some sort of sequence. So we'll make it return a t like this. There's no guarantee that's a sequence though. So we need to fix our generics in the method by constraining t so it must be a sequence. Now the transformation function returns some sort of sequence but now our return value is broken. We're returning an array of sequences, which isn't what flat map is supposed to do. Instead, what we mean to say is that it will contain the same type of elements as the transformation function sends back. 
So if the transformation function sent back a set of strings, then flat map 2 should send back an array of strings. Because Swift knows that t must be some kind of sequence, we can refer to its element type inside our method definition, like this t.element and t.element. And now if we run the code again, all three of our examples work great. OK, that's our solution done. So let's now take a look at the equivalent code in the Swift standard library. The code for Apple's flat map is in sequencealgorithms.swift. So let's open it up and search for func flat map. Here's Apple's version. So we have the same throws and rethrows. We have the same generic signature. But you can see they're using append contents of rather than the plus equals operator we used. Otherwise, the code's the same. That was a bit easy. So out of curiosity, let's look at the plus equals operator to see how it's different. This is stored inside array.swift. So let's open it up and search for func plus equals. As you can see, it just calls down to append contents of. Now I expect the compiler will look at our generic signature and optimize this function call away entirely. It'll replace our plus equals call with an append contents of directly. So there's likely to be no performance difference. OK, that wraps up our video. Our version of the code was very similar to Swift's, which is always great to see. And now it's over to you. What did you learn in this video, and how could you apply it to your own code? Leave a comment below with your answer, and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I make lots of videos like this one to help you build your skills as an iOS developer.